filming this ahead of time so I can sort of track my progress as I go along. But before I go on to explaining what I'm about to do and showing you that progress, I need to tell you um, a few facts. So first thing, one day I'm on the internet, don't remember what I was doing, but I came across an article um, by Teen Vogue and they had shown a picture of these beaded booties and I thought that they were awesome. Now I am a high heel lover and these booties got some heels on them. In addition, I love beadwork and I'm proud of my culture and I'm, I'm proud of the art forms that are involved in my culture. So when I seen these booties, my first thought was, High heel moccasins, I don't know. So everybody beats their moccasins, right? I have beaded moccasins. Um, and this woman had beaded high heel booties and I just thought that was the most awesome thing. <laughs> so her name is Jamie Okuma. I hope I say your last name right. I'm sorry if I didn't. She is a Shoshone Bannock woman from California and an artist, an amazing artist and um, when I seen the booties that she made, I had to look her up. So first I remember sharing a picture of these booties just on Twitter, like among my Twitter friends, and I was like, I need to try something like this someday. I hadn't realized at that time that I had actually interacted with her Twitter before, and then somebody had finally um, like shared her Twitter one day and I realized like oh this is this is the artist that created those booties so I followed her on Twitter and checked out her Instagram and um, she is the sole inspiration for this project that I'm about to do. So she has done a number of amazing um, native fashion projects and a lot of them have made it into museums, she's done commissions, she's done um, fashion shows um, campaigns like all kinds of really cool stuff and I'm very proud of her so a lot of it has to do with beading um, you know, like beaded booties, beaded boots, beaded shoes, beaded bags, um, all kinds of stuff, ribbon dresses, she's got um, all kinds of fashion accessories that are designed by her with her art and she has a website which I'll link down below that is where you can go and purchase some of her stuff. You can view some of her galleries of her artwork. Um, she also has a YouTube channel. Um, I'll link that below. And that's where she shows some videos of her in progress of doing her B work. She also has her Twitter and her Instagram. So her Instagram's really cool. And that's where she has tons of pictures of her work and other exciting things that she's up to. So again, I just want to state that this is um, the woman who I am being inspired by to do this project. I give credit to her for this idea because it's her who I've seen it from. Um, and I don't want anybody to feel like that I'm copying her. She has been copied too, which is not okay. She shared a picture on her Instagram where somebody had like this clothing brand or something. I can't remember their name offhand, but they'll be visible in the picture. Anyway, they had completely copied her boots that she made. So that's not what I'm up to. I'm not going to um, like be copying her idea bead for bead. Just I like heels. I like beading. I want to try my hand at putting my own artwork on my own booties and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> okay, so let's get into it. Um, I'm going to start with showing you what I have here. I got these from Payless. So if you see these shoes and you say, oh my god, I want them and Payless is closed down, 
I'm sorry. I was there for a different reason and seen these shoes and immediately thought these are what I'm going to be. By the way, I just want to point this one thing out is <laughs> I have always had it in my mind like, okay, well sometime I'm going to get around to eating these shoes. Um, but I had not had it in my mind of picking said shoes out that day while I was in Payless. But when I seen these, I I was just like, yeah. I, to be honest, I wouldn't wear these like the way that they are. Like they're just not in my taste. I I tend to be more like solid colors, um, pointed toe, closed toe, stiletto. Um, but I seen these and I just thought like these would be perfect shoes to be. So. First of all, I just want to say that I bought these before investigating Jamie's um, Instagram. I was just looking up all her stuff right before filming today, and that's when I came across this picture on her Instagram. I am very aware that these are pretty similar to the shoes in that picture, but I promise you I bought these like a few weeks ago and had intended on these being the ones to be before ever seeing that picture. So, Alright, so the game plan, I don't really know what I'm going to do with these yet. I know that I want most of the beadwork to take place in here. I know I want to like stick around the same kind of artwork that the Anishinaabe people did, which was kind of like viney and flowery and leafy. And um, I'm just kind of questioning myself on whether I just want to put flowers and vines in this section here and then have this, um, the original material be the background, or if I just want to be like the entire thing. I don't know if I'm going to put any beads on these areas yet, but I mean, there's a possibility that I could change my mind and do it. What is that? I want to put some sort of work in the back here. I don't really have a design laid out yet. I haven't gotten there. It's finals week at school. Give me some slack. Now is the only time I can film the intro, so this is what you're getting. So I have this. I drew this out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do it that way. We'll see. We'll find out. I just have like a whole mess of beads here. Limited colors. I got lots of grays. I got um, my favorite color right there. But yeah, so um, check out Jamie and let's jump future so i'm going to voice over my progress hope you don't mind <laughs> um yeah these are the shoes in their original state i ended up going with the floral drawing that i already had made and then drew an outline of the design onto the shoe with a pencil my advice to you is to draw the design on both shoes before applying any beads because i didn't and it was a pain in the ass to draw the second shoe so I jumped ahead of the video a bit and got halfway through filling the petals. I tried doing a lazy stitch, which is where you only stitch through the top layer of the leather rather than all the way through. And then I tried doing the two needle method, but neither of those worked for me. So I went with the tradish one needle method. I also started without using any tools, but there's a lot of areas where my fingers can't reach the needle from inside the shoe. So I ended up grabbing a pair of small pliers, a tip my husband taught me is to apply electrical tape to the pliers and that will help them grip the tiny needle because we don't got time to play any games. All right, here are the petals all filled in. I ended up outlining the inner petals with some black to give them more definition. I also threw in some gold in the biggest petal because hey, why not? I've had these gold beads for years and I've never used them. And then I decided that I need to draw the other shoe first before finishing the beadwork on the first one so that it would be a lot easier for me to match the two shoes. Let's go. 
So I tend to have a lot of trouble drawing two of the same thing and I was too lazy to find my measuring tape or draw grid work so I just tried drawing markers on paper to use as a guideline. <laughs> Um, this method ended up being more difficult and less accurate than I thought it would be, but hey, I figured it out. I'm gonna jump to the completely drawn on outline, but first, side note, I was watching one of my favorite YouTube channels while filming this next check-in, um, Simply Nail Logical, and she does this bit called Peel Porn, where she peels off her nail polish while playing funny ass porn sounding music, so enjoy that while you check out the outline. <laughs> So anyways, <laughs> I tried my best to get the outlines to match and I'm just going to have to tell myself that no two flowers are alike <laughs> to feel better about myself, okay? I know I have to redo the smaller flower on the top because I drew the second one too small. So, Alright, well I jumped ahead and did the vine and the little flower on the first shoe. Um, earlier I said I wasn't sure if I was going to fill the entire area in or not. Well, once I began beating the big flower, I decided I wanted to fill in the area with gray, but then I changed my mind once I finished everything and decided I wanted to keep the leather background A because I like it and B because I'm lazy. <laughs> Now I'm adding a geometrical pattern on the bottom because I don't know why. Um, I also just realized I need to fill in the gold part more. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm threading the entire line of beads here and then pulling completely through the leather with my tapey tweezers. I'm going to beat this pattern all along the strip underneath the big flower. Um, my original plan was to beat the pattern onto the formal strip, but I changed my mind because I thought it would look better up here. So there's that for now. So here's the first shoe all complete. I spent quite some time debating what else I wanted to put on these, like beadwork on the parts of the holes or beadwork on the back of the heel, but I kind of love these the way they are, to be honest. Jumping way ahead again, I finished most of the second shoe and tried really hard to make these little flowers match, but the second one ended up slightly bigger than the first one. My husband said they're fine, but who knows if he was just being nice or really didn't see a difference. Either way, I don't care. I'm going to cherish these shoes even with their flaws. So I just want to show you how far I got on the second band of the geometric pattern before having to undo all that work. It's not like I got super far, but I hate undoing even the slightest bit of beading and this sure as hell felt like a lot. I'm sure it's not totally obvious where I messed up, so here's a close up of where I fucked up. On the left is the original band and the right is the second band. Circled is the spot where I put only one light gray bead when I originally put two. Um, and my dumbass was about to do this a third time before realizing my mistake. Even though it wasn't terribly noticeable, I just couldn't leave it that way. I just couldn't. So before I show you the end product, I just want to share some silly shit, alright? So when I did the geometric bands, I started from the middle and then beaded outward. The very first side I did is encased in the red box, and then I did the white box, and then I moved on to the other shoe, right? So I had completely finished what was inside the blue box before I made a big mistake again. I only did one column with white beads on the outside when I meant to do three columns. <laughs> um, then I had an existential crisis and even asked Twitter if I should undo all that work or just accept my fate. Again we're talking about the blue box. So. Um, upon further investigation of the first shoe, I realized that I had actually made the exact same mistake in the white box without realizing it. <laughs> 
So I finished off the rest of the band and now I'm pretending that I did all that on purpose. Plus I was told when I first started beating that it's okay to leave mistakes in your work because we must be aware that we are imperfect and Gichi Manado accepts our imperfections. Which is why I usually leave a spirit bead in my work but hey, I'm just extra imperfect I guess. Okay, that's the end of story time. Here are the shoes, all complete. Of course, I'm wearing them to work the next day. Who can resist finally wearing a project you've been working on for two weeks? I absolutely love them. Let me know what you think. And thank you to Jamie Okuma for her inspiration. I hope this was entertaining or whatever you want it to be. And I'll see you on the next one. Bama Peak Wadman.